What's up guys, today we have a winner for the Race to $1,000 case study and it's really convenient that the winner comes at the month 12 update. So it took me one year to get to the winner that made $1,000 in one month. And the really cool thing was it also hit 100,000 page views by the end of month 12 as well. So it's a really good wrap up where we've hit one year, 100,000 page views, well over $1,000 per month on this site. And of course the winner is the Ezoic Display Ads website. So I had two websites in this race. One was an Amazon affiliate site, so it was fully monetized through Amazon affiliate. And the other one was an Ezoic site that was fully monetized through Ezoic Display Advertising. The Amazon affiliate site did not go anywhere. It was the biggest failure of a site that I've ever had. So today we're gonna to focus on the winner, which was the Ezoic Display Ads website. Just before we go on, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that this video is sponsored by Ezoic. They have sponsored the last couple of months of this case study. There is a link in the description below that you can go to Ezoic and you can uh, sign up to get display ads on your website as well. They've just cut their uh, entry requirements, so anyone can enter now. Even if you've got a brand new website, you can get into Ezoic and start monetizing just like I did with this website. Of course, that link in the description is an affiliate link. Okay, so let's have a look at exactly what happened this month. This month, the website just hit 100,649 page views. I had to make it to the very last day to finally get over that 100,000 page views mark, which is super exciting. It's the second time out of around about four websites that I've really focused on where I've hit 100,000 page views within 12 months. Okay, let's move over to the revenue now. Of course, this is the important one. This is the race to $1,000 case study. So did I hit $1,000 this month? Yes, I did. I hit $1,430.66 this month. Now, there are a couple of contributing factors. This was the last month of the quarter, meaning that the ad revenue is usually a lot higher in the last month of the quarter. You can see here that I hit an EPMV of $14.19. That was my highest EPMV I've ever hit for this site. But there's another reason as well, and that is I put in video ads and you can kind of see where I put the video ads on because there's a big spike here in revenue. The video ads are an awesome addition to any, you know, if you're using a Zoic or any other display ad network, I would strongly encourage you to use video ads. They really did help with my income. I think I'm gonna do a video in the next month or so about uh, how to do those video ads. If I've done it yet, I'll leave a link in the card above. Now, just before we move on, I would mention that I know Sean Mars has been sort of talking a lot lately about people who are doing income reports with the Zoic and not actually acknowledging that they're paying for the premium ad partners. You can see in the green, the dark green, that's my premium ad partners, and the light green is just called Zoic ad partners, which are the free ones. I'm a premium ad partner with Zoic because of other websites that I have in my portfolio. So I was paying for the premium ads on my other website, so I didn't have to pay for them on my new website. So um, I'm not, the, it wasn't actually really an expense for me, but just to acknowledge that, uh, just so that all of Sean's followers don't start yelling at me, uh, you can see here that my normal free Ezoic ad partners made $1,032, and then my premium ad partners added another close to $400 on top of that. So even without Ezoic premium, I would have passed the $1,000 mark for this month. Okay, so let's move on to some Q&A, answering some questions that people would probably have, especially if you're a beginner and you want to make $1,000 within one year of creating a website. The first question I often get, how many articles did you write? So I hit 201 total articles, which was my goal. I wanted to hit 200 articles for this website. I actually only did four this month. I've just been focusing on other projects. Um, the real big push was between months four and you know month nine there, a big push of articles in that middle batch. But you can see I was doing somewhere between you know, five articles a month, and at the peak, I was doing about 33 articles a month. But to target around about 200 articles within the first year is usually a pretty good general guide. Okay, how much traffic can the website get in the first six months? Now, personally, I do think that there is a bit of a lag in the first six months of getting a website to start getting traffic. 
I know there's all these debates about Google Sandbox. There are some obnoxious people out there who are just going to fight until the death saying there's no such thing as a sandbox. I don't care about the argument. All I care about is reality. And reality is in the first few months, usually you're not going to see much traffic. You can see here, this is my site um, that I'm currently on. These are two of my other sites that I've recently built. You can see here that None of the sites really got traffic until around about month six. You can see from month six onwards, if we're just focusing on my site, uh, month six, 2,000, and then month seven doubled to about 5,000, and then month eight to 7,000, month nine, 16,000, month 10, 33,000, month 11, 77,000, and month 12, 100,000. So you can see from month six onwards, you more or less get 50 to 100% traffic growth if the site is doing what you would want to expect to see of a very successful healthy site. And then you can see that here on my graph from Google Analytics. So starting from the first six months, you barely see any movement at all. And then at the six month mark, you start to see a little bit of growth and then it really starts to blow up around about between months six and 11, and then it flattens out around about month 11. That is a really, really common graph. And that's why we call it the sandbox because there's this first six months where not much happens at all. Whether or not that's written into the Google algorithm or there's, you know, there's some sort of an effect that oftentimes your first six months are going to be a wasteland. Okay, how much money can I make in the first six months? Do not expect to make any money in the first six months, but just like traffic is doubling or hopefully doubling between months six and 11, you should also see revenue double. So you can see revenue doubling here from eight to 35 to 60 to 130 to 280 to 690. And then finally, $1,430 in month number 12. And you can see with previous sites of mine as well, very similar things happened. Nothing in the first six months. And then we more or less see big growth in the second half of the first year of a website. Another really common question that I keep forgetting to answer, did I do any link building? No, for this project, I did no link building whatsoever. In fact, I went onto the site today to get this screenshot and it's the first time I've ever seen this site have a DA of three. Usually it hovers around a domain authority of two. So you can see here, this site has got zero domain authority, no good links at all pointing into it. And it just goes to show that you don't need to build links to build a really good profitable site. So what do you need to build a good profitable site if you're just beginning? Well, the thing that you really need is excellent keyword research skills. The better you are at keyword research, the less link building you need to do. I'd also emphasize that this is only really possible because I'm focusing on display ad revenue targeting very low competition informational content. If I was to target higher competition, say Amazon affiliate products, so best table chair or something, I probably would need to build links. But because I'm doing a display ad strategy, I can go for those keywords that are really low competition where I can rank without links. Moving on where I just said that the keyword research is the most important thing if you're not going to do any link building. What was my keyword research approach? Well, essentially I found a really big niche and tried to write 100 articles on topics within that niche. Trying to go for really low competition where maybe no one else is ranking for that keyword or I think that the people ranking for the keyword aren't writing very good articles. It might only be a 500 word article, for example, so I'll see if I can beat them. What I did is I sprayed out 100 articles and I actually went for probably too high competition for that first 100 articles. But once I put out those first 100 articles and started getting some feedback about which ones were ranking well, I could go and look at those ones that were ranking well and see whether or not there were other versions of a similar keyword that I might also be able to rank well for. And that was a very successful strategy for this site because after those first 100 articles, I think I had about 10 that were pretty successful and the rest of them were only getting a trickle of traffic. So for those 10 that were successful, I looked at them and said, well, what other keywords are very similar to this one that are in the same sort of little bunch of keywords that I could also target? And it turned out following that approach really helped put a fire underneath my website so you really need to put out a lot of articles, maybe 100 articles, and then see what happens. And then for your next 100 articles, so article 101 to 200, 
those ones need to be informed by which ones were successful in the first batch you did. Okay, very common question, how long were my articles? At a guess, they were usually around about 1300 to 1500 words. Some of them probably were a little bit longer and some were a little bit shorter, but that was around about the average. Now, I can't say that all of your articles should be that long, it's just that I looked at my competition and I thought that I could outdo my competition writing articles of about this length. My competition was writing articles about this length or shorter and I thought my articles would be better. Next question, did I pay for content? Yes, I did pay for content. I've actually written well more than 200 articles myself this year, but I've got a big portfolio of sites and I couldn't just concentrate on this website. So I did pay for around about 80 articles and I'm guessing I spent around about 200 to $250 on content. I had one guy who wrote all of those 80 articles for me. He was a guy who I contacted through a Facebook group, but you can use buy, sell text or wherever you want to get your content from. I just found a guy through a Facebook group uh, I can't remember, it might've been the Authority Hacker Facebook group or something like that. And uh, yeah, I asked him to write content for me and he and I have had a really good relationship and he wrote around about 80 or so articles for this site. Okay, and lastly, the website setup. I've got a very simple website setup that I use for all my sites, Astro Theme, WPX Hosting, uh, use the WordFence plugin and I use Gutenberg Ultimate Add-ons plugin and that's around about all I do. The Gutenberg Ultimate Add-ons plugin I use so that I can customize my homepage so that it looks like it's got posts in a sort of a grid fashion and it can also provide me with tables of contents. Okay, what's next? Now that this case study is over, the next thing that I'm going to do is Another case study, um, I've registered a domain today. It is in the travel and lifestyle niche. So I'm going to actually reveal the niche for this new one. It is sort of a very travel lifestyle oriented one. It's as close as I can get to explaining what the niche is. Uh, my partner and I are actually considering going traveling next year. Uh, so we thought, well, we could probably write some low competition articles on the different cities and places that we go to. Um, we're hoping to get a lot of travel done after COVID is finally over. So the first YouTube report is for this case study is coming in two weeks time. And it's actually a case study that we're calling the niche site cage fight, where Amelia Gardner and myself are competing to see who can make the best website or make the most money after a 15 month period of time. So stay tuned for that new case study. I'm really looking forward to it. Although I don't know how I'm gonna find the time to write content for a new website when I've got so many sites on my plate, but we'll see what happens. Everyone is rooting for Amelia, partially also myself for some reason. I just feel like she's gonna absolutely smash, like blow me out of the water with her site, especially because I know her niche that she's doing. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a really good niche. So um, yeah, keep following Amelia and myself and we'll keep doing updates and we'll keep doing sort of collaborative chats about uh, how our websites are going. So thanks everyone for following along for the Race to $1,000 case study. It's really cool that I managed to finish it within 12 months, getting over 100,000 page views and $1,400 in the final month of the case study. And if you have any more questions, you can ask them below. I've, hopefully I've answered most of them though. All right, cheers guys.